What's up guys and welcome back to the episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 40, it's the season finale today as we officially wrap up season 5 where we know the Swans can't win the title but have guaranteed the top four. yet with 6 points behind Man City who have already been confirmed as back to back champions but we can't now be caught by the Magpies, 4 points clear of them in 5th place. Uh, today guys, we're going to play the final day, uh, run through the season, deep dive into their statistics, uh, take take a look at the uh, the winners of the, uh, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, Cup, obviously the, the Champions League, Europa League, and, 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 and other competitions as well, and uh, also talk transfer to the new season as well. If you'd rather just come out for the new season, that's totally fine. We'll begin with the final day. Uh, it's Fulham away at Craven Cottage in West London. They themselves could survive, but probably need to beat us as Forest face Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. A point might be enough as well, to be fair, for them to stay up on the final day. Final game of the season, meaningless, but a farewell for Jamal Lowe. Come on, you swans. What a ball that is, what a ball, and what a finish as well. Ezekiel Zebulos, ex Boca Juniors man, gives Fulham leading again. They, they might need to win to stay up. Forrest again, they've got to go to Stanford Bridge and get a result to stay above Fulham. And by picking a weakened lineup here, Nuno's probably thinking, Doxy boy, are you serious? Come on, man. I know it's not going to stay for you, but it definitely is for me. <laughs> oh, dear. Even so, still plenty of time to get back in this game, though. But again, not, not too concerned if we don't. It's just a farewell game today. There's James. Hits Jamal. Nodded down. So, Oh, what a save that is. And Yusuf. Oh, and another great save. We get one last chance. Six on the clock. It's prime time for that man. In the middle. You see him. I see him. Oh, that was it. That was it. Just didn't get the through ball right. But... He might not bow out with a goal, but he might bow out with an assist. No. Yusuf denied. Where's Jamal? Where's Jamal? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's right on the edge. Jamal, get in the... How do I... Is there a way to... Oh, I miss when you could do, like, set-piece routines, you know. Is Jamal going to get in the box? No, he's not. God damn it. All right, I'll try and get him, try and get him an assist, if nothing else. Though. Where's... God, it takes ages to go down there. Where's Jamal? How is Carl ahead of Jamal in that list there? Come on, the final day assist. For so oh, it's off the bar, so close to the Vets bowing out, combining. Thomas Wood cleared, gutted, gutted. But it is what it is. Farewell party. It's all it was supposed to be. But Fulham get the win that will probably keep in the Premier League, and the fans don't look one bit bothered. <laughs> And so as the curtain comes down on the Premier League season and our fifth overall to say fourth in the top tier, we see the Man City as we know we're champions uh, with the Red Devils and Aston Villa both leapfrogging us on the final day as we ended up dropping to fourth place. Not even matters, of course, it's still Champions League football confirmed in South Wales next season. 32 goals conceded, league's best defensive record all throughout the course of the season. The problem? Well, we only scored 50 goals. Yeah, that's the main concern for me. Next year, we need to put the ball in the back of net more often. But, as I mentioned before, this is this is like a universal problem for me. And this is EAFC 24. No matter what a team I'm using, I always have a problem putting the ball in the back of the net. Malpais first, first six, Arsenal seventh, Brighton eighth, Chelsea ninth, and Liverpool with a really poor finish by their standards, just wrapping up the top 10. And in the end, Fulham's win sees them leapfrog Forest on the final day and survive. So, Haaland uh, wins the Golden Boot. Shock, horrid there. And as you'll see for Swansea, yeah, really. Really, really poor knowing that Kanuna was our top scorer. Which, to be fair, 14 and 34, which isn't bad. But to be fair, it is worth pointing out. We didn't really have like a consistent striker this year. Kanuna was also our most uh, creative player with seven assists this season. Uh, sorry, eight assists, sorry, in 34. Uh, one away from the uh, the assist title winner, Fabio Silva. Tattoo was on there with seven as well, which is nice to see. As uh, Carl retained his golden glow with 16 in 38. That is one point as well. We didn't really have a consistent striker this year. We kind of split the game time between Cam Archer and Vasquez as well. And as for the team of the tournament, well, you can see two representatives there. Both our fullbacks, Jordan and Dedic, made it in, uh, as did Kanunen as well. First time AK gets into the team of the season. And uh, yeah, ne neither of my centre backs getting in then in Flamingo or Hjelman. I, I thought personally Hjelman deserved it, but fair enough, Boz and Dedic both making it. But um, no, no Rushworth. That's, a, that's an interesting omission there. And just before we dive into the. Uh, Oh, Jamal, don't worry, mate. It was your final game. Of course I was going to give you the start, mate. Chin up, bro. Chin up. 
Um, just before we dive into the uh, the winners of the other major honours, we see two youth players there deals, uh, they're wanting to get pro deals. Uh, Ishmael Seca of Seca of Ivory Coast and also Victor Munoz, the Spanish striker. Uh, they've been watching grow quietly in the background. Uh, sorry, not Spanish, Argentine, um, who's been growing quietly in the background. And they'll both get pro as well. So only only two youth players left now. But I, I actually think personally, I'm I'm going to be done with youth scouting for the save now. Normally, I'll ask you guys coming to the end of the season, where should we scout next? But actually, I, I I think we're now what we five seasons in. Next year we're going to the Champions League. There's just not really enough time. Theoretically, there's just not really enough time for us to uh, to get anyone through the youth setup that will play meaningful minutes and meaningful roles in our squad. So um, yeah, I I think from now. We'll, uh, we'll leave the youth scouting for the save. So Munoz has the exciting prospect tag. And as for Ishmael, he has got showing great potential. So as for the other major honours, well, obviously the Carabao Cup, you know, was won by Swansea. That's our first of the save and second in club history. And as for the FA Cup, after our last 16 knockout to Aston Villa, they themselves did manage to reach Wembley, but were beaten by Arsenal, who ended up as runners-up to Manchester City, winning 4-0 in the, uh, the FA Cup final. The Europa Conference League this year was won by Fiorentina, defeating Villarreal in the final. Great team for an Italian RTG, Fiorentina. As for the Europa League, of course, where we put ourselves in a hole and failed to climb out of it against Benfica, but they themselves were knocked out by Wolfsburg, who they themselves were knocked out by Leipzig, who they themselves managed to win the trophy. Yep, Leipzig beating Napoli 2-0 in the Europa League final. And as for the Champions League, that we'll be going into next season. Well, some block Buster ties in the last 16, of course, with goals galore. Continuing in the quarterfinals as Manchester City beat Arsenal in the Champions League final, just like the FA Cup, to win another treble. I think that's their second to save and our third in six continuous years, counting last year's real life season. That's ludicrous. They are dominating right now. As for the other leagues in world football, starting with the Football League three tiers, uh, you'll see Burnley topping the championship this season with Luton going up in second place. Reading's points record gets beat every single year in the championship in career mode. It's wild. And the playoffs are at Leeds, Southampton, Sheffield United, and uh, also Watford as well. Speaking of Reading, they were promoted in League One alongside the winners Rotherham, Fleetwood, Barnsley, Derby, and Cheltenham Town. What a rise for them. Uh, are going to the playoffs with a chance of making a championship. And as for League Two, it's Port Vale, Bradford City, and Forest Green Rose up automatically with the playoffs being Stockport County, Barrow, Shrewsbury, and uh, also Carlisle United in League Two. That's got to be the worst season in recent memory for Paris Saint Germain. League Un, wow, what a shocker. Monaco top it with Lorien in second place. Stad Rain wrapping up the top four there uh, with Marseille having a very poor season by their standards and Lyon in 13th. And it looks like a changing the old guard all over. Borussia Dortmund, champions of the Bundesliga, finally after all those years of waiting for another one. Leipzig, Frankfurt and Bayern, the top four with Leverkusen just missing out and Wolfsburg in sixth. It was an Inter and Milan 1-2 in the Serie A with Fiorentina and Rona finishing top four this year. Juve and Napoli fifth and sixth in the Serie A. Final champions of the Eredivis, four clear of Ajax and AZ Altmar and five clear of PSV in fourth place in the Dutch top tier. Porto, six clear of Benfica in the Liga Porto. Portugal and nine clear of Sporting Lisbon. It's always a combination of those in the top three in the Portuguese league so I've found so far. And as for the Cinch Premiership, well, has anyone ever seen anyone other than Celtic or Rangers win it? I guess it's realistic. Celtic winners once again, 13 clear of Rangers, uh, who of course were runners up this year. As for La Liga, Barca champions, 13 clear of uh, Real Madrid, 21 clear of Atletico. A season of dominance for the most part from Barcelona, uh, with Sevilla sneaking into fourth place. I say sneaking in, they are eight points clear. Uh, as for the Turkish Super League, uh, Fenerbahce, 22 point winners uh, in the Turkish Super League. Uh, this season. And I know I've got a lot of American fans who follow me, so for those curious how the MLS has started off this season, it's into Miami on top. Not missing Messi, who's now retired. Five clear of LAFC uh, in the current full uh, MLS table right now. There you go. And just before I show you the full squad, you might be interested to see who's going to the World Cup 2028 We've got Hjelmund representing Denmark. Archer represent. Oh, Cam's. How is Cam? How is Cam being called up? I said it's so blasé. This is nice to see. I don't know how. Tattoo and Kanuna are going with Finland. Go on, boys. 
And uh, our Welsh trio is going to be Rodden, Levitt and Maton. How has Cam been called up now? He's barely played this season. I'm sorry, not the World Cup, the European Championship. Sorry. Um, uh, and these are the groups for you. And uh, I'll let you know who wins it uh, when we begin the new season tomorrow morning. Go on, Finland. So the final thing we'll do this season is take one last look at the squad and look at the areas we need to improve on for next season and where we did well this year. I, I would I would say personally, there's no point in replacing Kanun, and I, I know I've said it a few times now, but rating alone, you would say he's the weak spot. But based on goals and assists, he's been our best player, so no need there. Um, I, I, I personally would say we, we still want a few more goals up top. I'm not really sure about Koita personally at 27 years old, 28 years old now. He, he was good in his debut year, don't get me wrong, decent goal to game ratio, but a lot of his goals didn't come in the league. They came in the Cup in Europe. Cam obviously had his, uh, his big injury problems and Vasquez. Yeah, a few goals from the bench, but I do think maybe, even us bringing in Koita this year, we could do with a new striker, personally, and possibly a long-term successor for Joe Rodden. Now, in his 30s, Hjolman is a DM. We just play him out of position at CB right now, so maybe a, an elite centre-half for next year as well. We'll have to decide what we do with Carl between the sticks and Clark, who's been out on loan, but that, to me, is going to be our main concern. We're going to lose a few players in terms of depth. Ethan's going to go, Sol's going to go, I think Jamal's probably going to go, Marchetti will probably go as well. So we'll need to replace those men in numbers, but for the most part, it's a four and a half star team that continues to improve. But if we want to take the next step... And that is to be a guaranteed Champions League team and competing for the biggest of honours, the Premier League and the Champions League as well. We need a couple of elite players in this team, I would say. And as we do, wrap up with the squad hub as well. You'll see Carl this season again growing to one rating. Back-to-back -back golden gloves for Carl. It's, it's such a difficult choice, man. But the fact that he's not growing right now does kind of make me think maybe, just maybe. And it's like, it feels so silly to know he's won back-to-back golden gloves part of the best defence in the league and we're going to say right he dropped to the bench next year but that's just kind of how I'm feeling right now because Scott Clark again is going three ratings at Molyneux he does have another year there out on loan with Gary O'Neill to be fair, I might just keep him there for one more year I might say look another year at Molyneux then come back and we'll look at it there but right now five years younger and a rating higher and growing as well it's a difficult choice I don't know what you guys think feel free to let me know in the comments but that that's going to be my choice. Either I'll keep Clark out of Molyneux because there's no point in bringing him back to have him on the bench. Keep him there at Molyneux for another year or bring him back and start him ahead of Carl. Or maybe rotate. I very rarely rotate my goalkeepers. Who knows? Dox Arteta might be the, uh, the next plan for uh, for next season. Uh, I think Jamal, after three years here now, solid minutes from the bench, but 30 years. Like, is that a contract next season? He's not. He's got two more years now, but I might look to cash in in the summer. Jordan, not growing much, but still a really solid piece down that left-hand side. For us. So 81 overall now 25 years old don't feel the need to replace him either barely puts a foot wrong happy to keep him again joe that's a big call for us 30 years old now he's going to start to show signs of decline at some point not going to get any better at 80 overall we're going to want to replace him we don't need to sell him he's still got two years left on his deal but i think it's now time for him to transition to the bench in this season that's kind of what happened only 16 games in the league because we were playing hellman in his position as a ball playing defender Nathan Wood very rarely got a minute this season, but that's been the case since the save began, really. He's barely played for us, hence all his loan spells. I might look to cash in in the summer. Charlie Creswell, staying at 79 overall. He was a pretty solid player for us in Europe. I didn't mind it was a third-choice centre-half or fourth-choice centre-half at times when Ronald was on the bench, but, again, not growing anymore. I might look to cash in in the summer. Flamingo, though, still growing, man. Love this guy. 17 clean sheets in 42 this season, growing two ranks to 81 overall. Not sure he's going to get much better at 25 years old, but he's definitely not going to get any worse for at least another five or six years, so Flamingo is going nowhere. Sam Raskaru, six ratings out on low at the Saints, and, of course, now he's going into the playoffs. Ethan Laird downgraded this year. I don't know what has been the problem with Ethan Laird but his bones are made of glass man I mean this guy's just constantly ever since we bought him in constantly getting injured man he'll, he'll play like three or four weeks in a row and then bang he's done for three months again I think for Laird now a contract coming in the next season whilst you know he still can get better at 26 He's just too injury pro, man. I might just have to let him go and cash in in the summer. Dedich, though, what a pickup he was, man. Yes, we paid that release clause. Yes, it seemed to be an inflated fee, but I don't think he wasn't worth 52 mil. I'd say he definitely was this year. He chipped in with three goals in the league and one in the League Cup as well. A few assists as well. Impressive stats. Really, really impressive stats, man. 15 clean sheets and 45 in all competitions. That's averaging one in every three. And six assists and four goals. Yeah, this guy was brilliant for me, man. Absolutely brilliant. That's why I always say the market valuation at times... 
I don't pay that much attention to it. I really don't. 36 million, 25 years old, 84 rated, dual sided fullback with those stats. No way, man. In modern day football, worth way more, in my opinion. And we definitely got the, uh, the ROI, at least in my opinion. Uh, Emir Davis now up three uh, and Ellen Road away in the Championship at Leeds. Has he got one more year there or is he? It's a two-year loan deal. I was going to say, well, Laird's probably going to go in the summer. We could have had Davis uh, back up right back. Maybe not now, but he continues to grow. we love to see it as uh, Endo's grown eight out on loan in China. Marchetti, we've loved him since we brought him in on a free transfer in Season 2. But after three straight years with the Swans, I do wonder... If his time has come to an end, he's only got one more year left on his deal. We don't play him that much. He's mainly someone who just comes off the bench for energy. 30 years old, I might look to sell in the summer. I guess we'll see. Hjalmar, though, what a bargain. What was it, 25 and a quarter mil or something like that? Oh, my goodness. What a, what a player. For, 42 games, three assists and 15 clean sheets, playing out of position at centre-half as well. Absolutely superb pickup from Sporting Lisbon, and what a bargain buy. One of the bargain buys to save this guy was. But this guy continues to be possibly the biggest bargain buyer to save. For the third straight year, he played almost every single Premier League game. This is the first year in three he didn't play every single game. He only missed a one, though, this season. Iron Man, Moses Odger, Al Hassan Youssef, and he chipped him with a token goal. I swear, in all three years, he's got me one goal. He got me four assists in all competitions as well. Oh, I love this guy. I don't know how much better he's going to get now at 27 years old. I'll tell you what, this guy's going absolutely nowhere. Love this guy to pieces. And that goal he scored against Spurs. Oh, I wanted to cry. So emotional. Uh, Zhao Gomez coming in from Wolves. Uh, solid pickup for us. Obviously, he had a couple of injuries during the season. But 26 games in total. Three assists and 12 clean sheets as well. As a DM, still getting better as well. At 27, this was a, a brilliant, brilliant bargain by for Gary O'Neill's side. So he's obviously going nowhere after one year. So I just needed a breather there. Uh, Ethan Price has grown nine ratings out on loan at Brescia. We'll keep an eye on him there in Italy. Uh, Sinistera injured towards the end of the season. Once again, second year in a row that's happened. But three goals and three assists in 25. Six goals and five assists in all competitions in 32 games. It's not bad. I said with Lewis, since he's come in, it's like he's... he's He's not been great, but he's not been terrible. This guy is just your standard 6 out of 10 on the wing. Do you know what I mean? He does what I ask of him. And now at 29, still getting a little bit better as well. The numbers aren't terrible, but they're not that bad either. You know, nothing to write home about, but not terrible. Uh, Tyler Johnson, the American, growing rapidly out on loan at Amor Amora Bieta right now. Up 15 ratings to 74 overall. Massive overall spike due to the loan system. And as we know, Seca, we're going to try and loan him out for the new year as well. Seoul, however, I think is going to go 33 years old. We brought him in to instill a winning mentality into this Swansea team. Job done, vet. Job done. 33 years old now, got an injury during the season, uh, down 2 to 79 overall. In fact, two injuries during the season, down 2 to 79 overall. Fact of the matter is, his legs have gone. He's finished. He, he, he's, well, I wouldn't say he's finished. That's a bit harsh when you look at those stats there. Come on, mate. He's not finished. But um, <laughs> he's not finished. He's only 33. Um, anyone gets that reference, I love you. But uh, yeah, so I think I am going to release him. Brought him into instead of winning mentality. Two chosen in two years. Job done. Time for him to move on now as we look for other vets in the team. Dylan Levitt, probably not going to get any better now at 27 years old. Doesn't play that much, but staying at 77 raising is still a couple of years left on this deal. I'll probably keep him as a squad CM for next season as we're, uh, we're going to see Siaka Traore lead to Leicester on loan coming into the season as Healy has grown eight ratings out in France right now. But for Anton Kanunen, as we know, we'll, we'll never see this guy get the, hit the height he deserves to. But 18 goals and 11 assists in 42 games, averaging a 7.57, speaks for itself. The rifle, once again, was sublime. Big game player, coming up with big goals in big moments. Up two ratings to 78 overall. We know. We know. We know. You know, I know. We know. Kanunen is never going to hit the heights he deserves to. Right now, he should be about 85 overall. Well, he's seven ratings lower than that because the yeah, just refused to give him his potential back. They sucked it out of him. And with those stats, I can't understand why. It's gutting, absolutely gutting. We still love the rifle, and he'll still be, uh, oh, he's going out on loads of Rangers. He'll still be our first choice AM for next season. I I'm in two minds about Dan Jones. Our contract coming in the next season, once again, pretty, pretty okay stats. But to be fair, a lot of his games did come from the bench. Five goals and six assists in 28, 30 years old now. To be fair, he is an academy grad as well. So I think in the summer, 
I probably will give him at least one more year on his contract, but I guess we'll see. Uh, and as for Morgan Whitaker, probably not going to get any better now at 27 years old. 77 overall, but again, a squad winger. He, he does a decent job. We've got a few squad wingers here. And, uh, they do just about enough for me to keep him, you know. Probably not saw with Thomas, though. We've had him for a couple of years now. He's got two years left in his deal, but this guy, this guy barely plays. I mean, this guy is literally like... He, he, he plays the most meaningless games and plays meaningless minutes in garbage time. That's all sort of Thomas does for me, man. So in the summer, I might just cash in. With the squad wingers out on loan right now, looking even better, including Van Gura. Up four ratings in Belgium this year, the 79 overall back in the summer. I've been big on this guy since we saw him in the academy. I'm excited to use him for the first time next season. With 96 dribbling, 92 ball control, 90 curve, this guy... Looks like an amazing teenage winger. Uh, Bamba, he came back from his loan spell. I need to loan him out now, really, because he's barely going to play for next season. 77 overall now, 21 years old. Matondo, again, one of those players who just about keeps him here due to getting a few goals per season. Three goals in 16 and one assist as well. I'll, I'll, again, I'll probably just keep him for one more year, to be honest, and see how I feel after that. But Charlie Connick out on loan at Bournemouth right now. Is that his final year? And as for Charlie Connick, sorry, just messed up there. Um, two goals in nine in the Premier League. Barely played this year. I don't know why. Grew two ratings out on loan at Bournemouth. To be fair, they finished comfortably in mid-table. But even so, this guy looks fantastic. He's back in the summer. And like Bangura, I'm looking forward to giving him a few more minutes next season as our returns are finally coming home and all our chickens are returning to roost. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, Tattoo on the way. Better, better from Oliver this year. Better. Eight goals and 12 assists in 44 in all competitions. This guy up to 87 overall now. And whilst he doesn't feel like an 87 rated player, I feel as though I don't get as much out of him as I should. I think it's more a me problem than a tattoo problem. I just don't get as much out of my wingers as I probably should, mainly because they're not playing as natural LWs and RWs, but LMs and RMs. But up two ratings to 87 overall. Don't know how much better he can get, but tattoo Oliver. What a decision not to cash in with that big bid from Arsenal a couple of years ago and keep him here. Another good season from Tattoo. And um, Mendoza up 2, 79 overall in Ellen Road. Osorio has grown 8 back in his native Argentina. Traore, the new Bonnie, has grown 5 out on loan in America. And Kai is up to 72 overall away in Sweden right now. As for Jamal, <laughs> 2 goals in 16. Down to 64 overall. 33 years old. Oh, let's do it one more time. Always believe in your soul. You've got the power to know you're indestructible. Always believe in Jamal Lowe. Final time we'll sing the song. Retiring at the end of the season. And one of only two OGs from Swansea that remain for the entire save. Jamal Lowe, Mr. Big Game. Always came up big when I needed him. Love you. Enjoy your retirement with a Carabao Cup and FA Cup winner's medal around your neck as well. As for Vasquez, solid this year, man. Brandon from the bench. 11 goals in 23 and 9 assists as well. That's averaging just under one direct contribution to a goal every single game. Brandon Vasquez, like I said, you always want a striker like this. A different option off the bench when the pace isn't working. Vasquez scoring some clutch goals as well, including that leveller at Villa Park. W what a great player. What a great score player he's been. And what a buy he's been as well at 29. And still... Mark's not getting any better, not going to go down just yet. Koita, like, like I said, Koita, Koita, I'm kind of in two minds about. 15 goals and 11 assists, just like Vasquez. Great goal to game ratio in 29, but can I trust him for a full year? Got the injury coming at the end of the season, I guess that's the question. Do I see this guy being my elite striker in the Champions League? Has he got the ability? Can he take the next step up? I don't really know. But no matter what, he'll still have a place to play in the team. But as for Cam, this is why I'm surprised he's going to the, uh, to the Euros. Dude, dude, dude's missed six months this year. <laughs> he's missed six months of football. He got two, bro. He's missed six months of football and he's still injured now. And Gareth still picked him. We haven't seen this guy since February, I think. How's he made the Euro squad? I don't know, but down to 80 overall this season with the six month layoff. Eight goals in 16, nine and 18, averaging one in every two. For Cameron Archer, it's a big call. Do we sell him in the summer? He's been our starting striker for the most part since season two, but this year played the least minutes out of all three due to the six-month layoff. Is it a case of Cam being too injury played, uh, played? Or do we keep him for one more year? I guess we'll see. But guys, any transfer targets, do let me know in the comments section down below. I've been waiting for the open-top bus parade to start, but 
I don't think it's coming. I don't think Swansea are bothered about a League Cup after winning the Carabao Cup, after winning the FA Cup last year. So we shall leave it there. Any transfer targets, as always, guys, they ask in the final and the finale. Leave them in the comment section down below. 75 to 80% of the team has been built by you guys. So any more transfer targets, do let me know as look to improve our team even more so for next year. Going to defend a Carabao Cup and going to the Champions League for the first time ever with Swansea. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching Season 5 and the finale as well. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for a brand new season as Season 6 begins in South Wales going to the Champions League tomorrow morning.